starts to take shape in their minds and when they start to become leaders and I can put them into leadership positions, uh, it's a huge way for me to look back at you know what I've been doing and say, yeah, this is what God has called me uh, to do with my life. And one of the biggest things that I absolutely love doing is not teaching kids about music or teaching them to love music. I do love that part, but the best part is when I get to be almost a friend or a mentor to them. And then at the end of the year, if they've had a really hard time or something and they've come up to you and they say thank you, and you know, hearing a middle schooler or a high school say thank you and mean it, that's incredible because they're not always sincere, but <laughs> you know that you've made even the smallest impact in their life. And that's probably the hugest part of my job for me. We always have what we call the fellowship of the doubters. Okay, in that game, those first two rounds, the first two matches didn't go the way that we won. And I'm sure that at some point in their heads, some of the, the, that voice that brought up the mistakes, that brought up what didn't go right, and maybe there's even some voices in the crowd, it seems to always show up in difficult situations. We hear this voice called the fellowship of the doubters in life and in sport, okay? Many times it's by those who don't play, those who instigate but they don't fight, those who talk but they don't risk. And we definitely, as a football team, have experienced the fellowship of the doubters. But there's another concept watching that game that I was reminded of. It's 11 letters, five syllables, it's a Latin word, it's from a dead language, but the concept is not dead. The word is called magna nimitas. It means greatness of spirit.